So uh, I'm assuming you've all come to see a man have a meltdown on stage. That, that's right, yeah? Yes. His hand's good. OK, uh, CG artist to storyteller. So uh, I guess um, I should introduce myself. Do you know what I should have also done? I should have brought the bloody clicker, shouldn't I? Genic! <laughs> it's a great start. <laughs> hey, Genic, have you got the clicker? Forget my own head, man. <laughs> That is a strong start. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Thank you. So my name's Chris McFall. I'm the director of Holopixel Studios. We're a small, uh, we're a small startup um, studio based in Cardiff, UK, specializing in creating original animated content. Um, but what I want to talk about today is, is that journey from going to, from being a jobbing freelancer to actually telling your own stories. I think so many of us learn Blender because we want to make movies. We want to make Pixar, we want to make Illumination, we want to make Minions, you know? We want to do that stuff. But we get caught up in trying to earn a living, right? So you take on jobs, and they tend to be commercial jobs. For me, it's a lot of dancing sanitary products was my bread and butter for many, many years. You, yeah, I'm, I'm, every time I go to say something, I'm like, oh no, that's a curse word. You're not allowed to do that with the blender content. Yeah. So anyway, 2018, I was a full-time freelancer. I wanted to tell my own stories. I wanted to build my own worlds, worlds but I, I just had no idea how to get there. Um, I didn't feel I could go down the studio route and work my way up, because I'm I'm 40, and uh, that would take some time. I didn't have enough experience as a director to just cut the line and jump straight in. I couldn't self-finance my own pro uh, projects because, well, I'm a dad of two, and money's tight, and, you know, I'm not giving myself a sob story, but, you know, keeping a roof over the head, that's your priority. You can't just sort of go, I guess the children will have no shoes this year. <laughs> and I couldn't get any funding. I really tried. I tried every year, year in, year out. And I, I got rejections. And one of the problems with uh, getting film financing is the feedback isn't always that clear or uh, consistent at all. So you don't know who you're pitching to. You don't know what they want. So it's very hard to course correct. So for 10 years, I didn't get any funding. So why was I struggling to find my way? I'm going to show you my old show reel from 2018. This isn't because, hey, look at the pretty stuff I've done, because uh, to be honest, it's a little dated. But there is, I want you to pay attention to the last frame. There's a little message at the end that I put there. And I think it's very telling as to why I didn't get funding. But we'll get to that later. I don't know if there's supposed to be sound at this point. frame. All work, including music, created by, in its entirety by Chris McFall. There's a strange certain arrogance to that. It's also not factually true, because there's definitely some work by John Ball in there. And uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll come back to that. So the first smart thing I did on the journey to becoming a storyteller 
was pour myself into both the Blender community and the local creative communities. I went to as many events and met as many people as I possibly could and irritated every single one of them. Um, I became very good friends with John Ball of Poked Studio. You might know him from things such as absolutely everything. Um, that man is everywhere. And Stephen Thomas, a CG nerd, who, uh, you know, again, a really good friend. And we sort of, uh, what we'd do is we'd meet up every, every week in the pub and we'd talk about these creative goals, what we wanted to do, what we wanted to make, and we would try to put together a, personal, a joint personal project. We'd pool together. And uh, what we did was argue for two years. Specifically me and John, we're both very stubborn, we're both very opinionated, and we just sort of butted heads for two years. And uh, um, that's not me slagging him off. I, I was probably born most at fault there. Stephen was very, very patient. Um, and yeah, we just could, we wanted, we wanted to set out on a journey together, but we couldn't agree on which way to go. And that was pretty much the size of it. Anyway, two years pass from, I think it was about 2014, 2015, two or three years pass. And in 2019, uh, something changes. So uh, there's, uh, there's Steve, there's John. This is in my studio, and we're, just, uh, we're, we're doing a, a video review of some of the animation we're working on for this next project. So uh, John gets a client in 2019. He's, he'd done some work from before. He'd created some CG characters for them. And they came back and said, hey, John, how do you feel about bringing these characters to life and doing a couple of YouTube videos for us? And he went, let me run it by the team. Came and brought it to us and said, why don't we do this as our startup project? And we said, yeah, OK, that, that sounds like a great idea. Um, so one year later, we'd made four episodes of Saving Soup. Uh, that this is a kid's show. Um, the designs aren't ours, but the, you know, we did the CG work and, and brought it all to life. There's lots of custom rigging, lots of different stuff. We figured out pipelines. We figured out how to be a team, more or less. I mean, there was still a lot of arguing. I'm a very difficult man. So this is Saving Soup. This is just a quick sort of excerpt trailer. go. Don't act like you're not impressed. I saw Daniel Bice's show reel, and it's got nothing on saving soup. It's not the world's greatest thing, but that's not the point. It was a first step on the journey. And, and as I said, what we, learned, what we got from that was we worked as a team, and we proved consistently we could put together narrative pieces of animation. Uh, you know, and, and cohesively sort of do it without killing each other. And I think that's a really important thing that you, you need to be able to demonstrate one way or another. So we got very lucky in finding that client, or that client finding us. Um, I shouldn't have stared at the lights now. I can't see the screen. Uh, so yeah, having a client gave us direction, a vague hierarchy, because John had the money, so therefore I had to do what he said. And, uh, and a budget to sustain us whilst we worked. And that's the key thing. When you're, when you're, you're going for the things, it's, uh, we're all thinking about the money. What are we going to do? How are we going to keep a roof over our heads while we put inordinate amounts of hours into these animations? So yeah, we had a pipeline. We had a piece of work to showcase. And we had another idea to move on with. But we needed a producer. Enter the dragon. Um, so this is where my friend John James Yes, everyone in this story is called John, except for me and Steve, because we're special. Um, fortunately, I've been working with my old friend John James on a bunch of different visual effects projects. Um, and in 2019, just as Soup was wrapping up, we embarked upon setting out to make, make a short film. We had a, I had a really stupid idea for a film, and John loved it. So uh, the, this was originally entitled You've Got Dragons, but then we found out after making it, after having that line in the script and spoken to camera, ooh, you've got dragons, um, we found out that literally around the corner, someone had done a book called You've Got Dragons and a, a stage play. So I was like, well, we still haven't got a working title for this thing. We don't, we don't know what we're going to call it. It's been for about eight different names. Uh, so let me tell you about dragons. So dragons is a kid's horror film, because that's a genre nobody asked for. Um, it's about a mother and her young daughter, and they move to a spooky old house in the Welsh countryside, only to find it is infested by baby dragons, and they call in pest control, who turn out to be a sacred order of knights who go to hunt down the dragons. Hijinks ensue. Now, just to add to that, it is also an homage to the 1986 film Aliens, 
We steal most of the dialogue, action, and names uh, and prompts. And as a result, the tagline is, in Wales, no one can understand you scream. <laughs> I'm very proud of that tagline. Might be the funniest thing I've ever said or thought of. It's not saying a lot. Um, anyway, the whole thing's an homage to Aliens, and it's that. It was filmed in 2019, but sadly in 2020, the post-production process faltered and ground to a halt. COVID had hit in, uh, um, in March 2020. The UK went into full lockdown. On the same day, I found out I was going to have another child. I persisted with it as long as I could, and then as soon as the baby was born, basically no spare time, no sleep, no nothing. So it, come, it comes to a halt. But we'll get back to that later. I say that a lot. 2020 is when things changed. We applied for funding again, this time not to a film fund, but to a creative business fund, Creative Wales. We applied as a team. We pooled our experience, we pooled our resources, and had a joint goal that we agreed on and didn't argue about for two years, which definitely helped. We made a business case for the money uh, with a creative brief attached, and you know, provided we got a little bit of funding, we were promising employment opportunities in the area and international trade deals, potentially. And it paid off. We received a modest but very generously given grant from Creative Wales that allowed us to make our first pilot. Uh, so, I, again, it's the script. I'm just going to say again, Creative Wales, thank you so much. Ten years we waited to, to have someone put faith in us in a monetary sense, and, uh, and they really came up trumps, and they've been very good to us ever since. So, the project is called Ungameland. This is one of the early sort of uh, production sort of stills. Ungameland is the, the, the brainchild of John Ball from Poked Studio, who I mentioned earlier. Um, so, he had a concept. Um, Actually, let's, let's, let's get back to that. So uh, the pilot was on Gameland. This time, rather than argue, we came together to bring John's vision to life. We had a pipeline, a budget, and a direction. I took on some young animators, Jay and Alex, uh, and a freelancer, Anairin, and I trained them in character animation in Blender, all whilst working live on commercial projects, including on Gameland. And that is something that, going forward, has shaped how we, we are building our studio model. Um, because they were trainees, we actually managed to get their wages paid for a year by the government. They were on an unemployment scheme. Um, and that obviously meant that they weren't quite ready for production, but they worked diligently and enthusiastically. And now, uh, uh, Jay's still with us, Alex has moved on, but um, I'm so proud of the progress they made. Um, and you know, occasionally, I think there's little moments in Ungameland which are less than polished, and that is as much down to me with all the experience in the world than the, the trainees, but it's, it's a wonderful way to to work. It's, it's a very hard way to work because obviously you're wearing multiple hats where you're rigging, you're directing, and you're teaching people the process. And that's, that's hard going. So you're setting yourself up for a bit of a chore, but I thoroughly recommend it because it's always so rewarding to engage with, you know, with the, the next generation of artists in that way. Nope. So John's concept was simple. And Gameland is set in the 1980s. It's centered around Aaron, a young boy obsessed with computer games, getting pulled Tron style into a computer game world. Uh, John James, the producer, and I, I told, every, told you everyone's called John, uh, set out on expanding the idea to give it more heart. So to do this, we introduced the idea of Elaine. Um, this is Aaron's sister, who was left behind when he got taken into the computer game world. And 30 years later, she enters on Gameland to save her brother, in the process of losing her memory. So unaware of their connection, the two siblings set out on a journey to save each other. And that heart has actually done, it did, it did wonders in transforming how we approach the characters, uh, rather than just being a generic sidekick. Um, because obviously, Elaine looks like this, because they take on avatars when they go into the game, so they don't recognize each other. Anyway, I'm over-explaining. Why don't I just show you it? So this is uh, the trailer for Ungameland. You might notice the rain rig being used right at the start. I'll explain that later.
So that's on Gameland. It took us a year um, working full time on it, um, creating custom rigs, um, expanding our pipeline, working new techniques to get stuff together and done, obviously training the animators. Um, but we're really, really proud of how it turned out. And the idea is now that we have a pilot that we can take and shop around to different studios. Typically, when you're, you're working on pitching to people, you just have a couple of maybe scamps, little mock-ups, a script, <coughs> maybe a Bible for it, get outlining the arc. And you're supposed to take that and, and sell it to people. I am running out of time. I'm going to have to move faster than this. Um, but yeah, we wanted to create pilots to show, to demonstrate our ability and to demonstrate our ideas. I'm terrible at pitches. As you can tell, it takes me 20 minutes to say hello. So elevated pitches, not in my forte. We're going to move faster. OK, I mentioned dragons earlier. I'm just going to skip straight to the trailer. This is very rough. I do apologize. It was thrown together the other day just to have something to show you. And the audio is way too quiet at the start, and I do apologize, but it gets louder. Just some hatchlings, more common than you'd think. Easy to miss till they become a problem, <laughs> particularly as they are mostly nocturnal. You know what that means? It means that they mostly come at night, mostly. <laughs> right. The little girl starring in that video is my, at the time, six-year-old daughter, Maddie. Um, the first AD was my partner, Beth, John James, and his, as of tomorrow, wife, Lauren, uh, producer and set designer. Friends came from out of the woodwork and helped us in so many ways. They loaned us for house to shoot in. Uh, I was Richard Roberts, so my friend Helen lent us for house. Uh, Richard Roberts lent us his swords and all this sort of stuff. Uh, you'll see, you, as you can see here, the, a lot of the external shots uh, are fully CG because, well, lockdown, we couldn't go out. And uh, yeah, all sorts of shenanigans. So it was a massive collaboration made possible by the talents and generosity of the entire team, um, old friends. And uh, yeah, whilst that's playing, I'll just continue to talk. I think I'm going to have to wrap up because I've got like a minute. Um, the thing that changed from those early days is, as you said, oh, I did everything on my own. You can't work like that and you know, have, have people have faith in you to give you money because it's like, wait, he's going to try and make a feature film all on his own. Is he nuts? You can't have that attitude. You've got, it, it, people have different ideas to you, but that doesn't mean they're wrong. There's so many diff right ways to do something. And listening to those ideas, you don't always have to say yes. I, in fact, I thoroughly encourage arguing with your co-creators. You don't always have to say yes, but you do always have to listen. And if you know that someone in that team has a, a quieter voice than most, then it's your duty to amplify it. Anyway, this is taking way too long. I've got 20 seconds. You get the point. There's visual effects in the film. Very dark ones, apparently. Okay, I'm on you. Right. So, yeah, I think I just covered that. Covered that. So, uh, an apprentice-centered studio. We're looking to take on um, staff on an apprentice-based level and fill the education to industry skills gap that is currently happening. We're looking to introduce more Blender users to the ecosphere in the UK because it's, it, weirdly, the UK doesn't have it or didn't have a huge uptake in Blender. Um, and we're looking to supply those, um, those talented creatives to other studios uh, 
There's a number of Welsh studios which have already come on with us, but we're hoping many, many more. We've had the right sounds come back to us. So it sounds like we're onto a winning idea. It's gonna be a very tough road, but because we can make them work on live projects, which don't have a time deadline because we're making pilots to pitch, it's a unique sort of proposition. Um, our upcoming projects, we have so many different creative ideas from 10 years of uh, you know, failing to get funding. We've just got this backlog of ideas, including Codelings, which is my concept, which actually got funded earlier this year. Um, I don't have time to tell you about it, but I will be around for a few hours after the talk before I have to catch a flight to go to my producer's wedding, the inconsiderate swine choosing to have a wedding during Blender conference. Uh, this is the one, uh, this is a 20 second clip, so, or even shorter. This is the one piece of rendered footage we have, test footage. This is one of the bad guys' choir. He's voiced by Dominic Diamond of Games Master fame. Um, I would love to tell you how that came about. It was the day my grandmother exploded. Cheers, Dominic. <laughs> so that's it. From here, we're gonna to continue to build the studio and our stable of IP, continue to train and develop the careers and new creatives, and continue to collaborate and help each other find a way out of the maze. What the future holds for us, we don't know. The next steps are unsure. An essential step for us would be to find, get one of our concepts optioned to get our work in front of people. But a few weeks ago, we found ourselves taking a step towards that, showing on Gameland 2, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, but we had a meeting with Nickelodeon, and they didn't say no. So um, <laughs> they didn't say yes either, just to clarify that, but we have a couple more meetings, and even if they just give us some pointers along the way, we're very grateful for them to taking the time to see us. I'm very grateful for you to taking the time to watch us talk. Thank you ever so much. Oh, water. Yoink! <laughs>